The Quran is a holy book that Muslims believe came from God in the 7th century. God gave these messages to a man named Muhammad while he was in two cities, Makkah and Medina. One of the major teachings in the Quran is the idea that there's just one God. This was a new idea at the time in Arabia, where people often believed in and worshipped multiple gods. In this video, we will explore the story of devoted Christian Dr. Gary Will's answers about Holy Book the Quran. But before we get started make sure you smash that like button, hit at the bell icon and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Let's get into the video. 1. Different Teachings, Same Central Belief Essentially, this is not the first time that the belief in a singular deity has been shared. This message was initially given to the Jews in Hebrew, then to the Christians in Greek, and later to Muslims in Arabic. These three different revelations are significant in differentiating the followers of the book, each having a unique agreement with the same God. There is only one God. Those of us who believe in a single God are essentially part of the same group. We should respect and safeguard each other's worship places, including monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques as mentioned in the Quran. In these places, God's name is frequently invoked. They are, those who have been evicted from their homes without right, only because they say, Our Lord is Allah. And were it not that Allah checks the people, some by means of others, there would have been demolished monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques in which the name of Allah is much mentioned. And Allah will surely support those who support Him. Indeed, Allah is powerful and exalted in might. 2. A Universal Message, The Quran's Teachings for All the Quran teaches that God doesn't limit his messages to specific religious groups or times, but communicates with all people, starting from Adam who is considered the first prophet after seeking forgiveness for his mistakes in the Garden of Eden. This continuous chain of prophets includes figures like Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad who didn't come to erase previous religious teachings, but to reinforce them. In the Quran, it's not just humans who deliver God's messages. Nature itself is seen as a form of divine communication that we're meant to interpret. We can find hints of God's purpose in the beauty and majesty of the universe. For instance, Moses isn't the only voice on the mountain, the mountain itself is speaking. Solomon listens to the birds. Every moment, the world sends us clues about the splendor and strength of its creator. This realization should encourage us to respect and protect God's creations, a crucial lesson for our time when environmental sustainability is a pressing concern. 3. A Call for Compassion and Moral Conduct The Quran, the holy book of Islam, is more focused on inspiring its readers through poetic verses rather than imposing laws. It lays a strong emphasis on living a life full of empathy towards other living beings, as part of God's creations. Violence is strictly sanctioned only in cases of self-protection and it is never supported for the purpose of propagating the faith. Business interactions, whether they are with Muslims or non-Muslims, must always adhere to high ethical standards. Exploitative or unfair practices are strongly discouraged. 4. Women's Empowerment During the 7th century, society practiced polygamy, a concept similar to early Hebrew traditions and initial Mormon practices. But, there was a strong emphasis on treating women with respect. Europe had a practice where the bride's family paid dowry to the husband's family, but in the Quran, this rule was different. Here, the dowry was given directly to the bride and it was her property even if the marriage ended in divorce. This was a significant move in women's empowerment during that period, a precedent not seen elsewhere in the 7th century. The Quran is a profound book with numerous layers of understanding. Its teachings hold value for everyone, even those not following Islam. As Pope Francis indicated, everyone, including non-Muslims, can gain wisdom from the Quran. What do you think is the most significant aspect of Holy Book the Quran? Please tell me in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, make- Wow, I love this new insight about the Quran, you know, talking about the rights of the woman, and Quran does not support, you know, evil, it does not support bad, it does not support, you know, fight and all those stuff. You know, this actually allowed me to understand 
more about Islam, about Quran, and indeed, Quran's Allah is powerful and must be exalted in might. You know, that's when you feel the power of Allah through the Quran because of the mighty works. You know, it did through its servants. You know, Prophet Muhammad. And one thing I also took from it is the fact that Adam was the first prophet in the Quran, even though. Adam was not considered as a prophet in the Bible, but he's the first prophet in the first prophet in the Quran. Even though he was not considered as the first prophet in the Bible. And he, when he, he disobeyed God, he asked God for forgiveness in the Quran and God forgave him. And you know, people learn from Adam due to his you know remorsefulness. So I learned a lot from this. From this whole explanation about Quran, make me understand more about Islam and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. One has to take this our time to sit down as a non Muslim or even as a Muslim and watch this video all over and over again. Then you, you will get deeper understanding about Quran itself. It's just like this this man has summarized everything you need to know about Quran in just five minutes, in just few minutes. And that was beautiful, beautiful to watch. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. One like, share, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.